Good everyone. Um, my name is Julian Illich. I'm currently Man Managing Director of Tiller Rides and thanks for tuning into this Facebook Live event. Um, I'm here with Fabian McGrady Burden, who's one of our investors and also on our board. And um, he's an experienced startup founder, was the co-founder of a company called GreenSense. And um, I'll tell you a bit, a bit more about that soon. And um, he also invested in Tiller Rides in the first round and he's planning to invest in the second round as well. So um, tonight I'll be chatting to him about why he chose to be an investor and a bit of his background. So I think I'll find this quite interesting as well. So um, let's get into it. Okay, okay. nice to meet you. Yeah. Hello everybody. Yes, excuse, I'm, excuse the wine. Yeah, that's right. We're at Fabian's house actually. I've just turned up on a roadster and um, I had to battle through the Eagles traffic to get here because there's a massive amount of people about to watch the game here. So, um, but we got here on time. So, um, tell us about your journey as co-founder and managing director of GreenSense. Yeah, sure. So, um, so GreenSense was a business that we co-founded with a couple of business partners really about 10 years ago now. Um, and we were in the sustainability space as well, so that's an area of interest of mine. Um, our focus was sustainability of buildings, so we were looking at how to improve the energy and water use of commercial property. Um, so that was a journey that took us about seven years, included raising money from external founders, mm -hmm. uh, and then we sold the business about three years ago, uh, and then I spent some time working for the acquiring business. So I guess we've gone through a lot of the same kinds of experiences that you're going through with mm -hmm. Tiller Rides in terms of building a product, building a customer base, raising money, um, mm -hmm. sales and marketing, so they were all kind of the kinds of things that we had to tackle through through the GreenSense experience. And what was your, how long was the journey from starting to selling? About 10 years from, from when we started the business to when we sold the business. Um, and yes, yeah, so I think we, we raised capital about three years in. So we had um, mainly from high net worth. So we had a couple of rounds of investment, plus we had some um, commercialization Australia grant support. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and then from when the investors uh, came in to when we sold the business was about Four or five years, right? Yeah, okay. maybe four years. Yeah. Is that considered quick, or is that? Look, I don't know. I think that's. Look, I think, I, I guess I'd say ten years is like a, a typical, mm -hmm. typical. I guess if 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 the business is going towards a trade sale, um, obviously there are businesses that you know continue to grow and become you know, you know really big businesses, and they'll keep going for a long time. Maybe maybe leading to an IPO or some other kind of event yeah. that provides liquidity for the early shareholders. Um, you know, in our case. Um, I guess we, we, we sold the business when we did because we had a couple of expressions of interest from, from people who approached us. Um, and we'd had a change of, of um, in, the, in the makeup of the executive team around that same time. We thought, well, maybe that's an opportunity to, okay. to look at one of those offers that we've received and um, okay. progress that through the sale. Interesting. All right. And just by the way, you can pop questions in as we're talking and we'll answer some of those towards the end um, if we can. So, yeah, sure. But we're sort of mainly recording this for people to watch afterwards. So, um, I know you're involved in another startup or two now. So maybe you can talk a bit about yeah, sure. some of the ones you're involved in if you can. Where you can talk yeah, about. look, I, I guess I've, I've done a little bit of I guess you call it angel investing. Yeah. Um, so probably four, I think startups, maybe yeah. four or five, depending on which ones you count. Um, and I, and I guess I kind of felt like I've come through the Perth startup community, and so one of the things I want to do is try and provide some support back into the community, both mm -hmm. through some mentoring and through some um, angel investing. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess I found that quite rewarding. So Tiller Rides is one of the companies I'm most actively involved in. So I've got, I guess, you know, yeah, on, yeah. on the board. Yeah, very active, rides. well, on the board and actively involved when I need to call someone and talk yeah. to about certain things. So yeah, yeah and I think in the other in the other cases, I'm more just you know just one of one of the investors. Um, but it's really fun, I think, being involved in early stage businesses. There's lots of um, excitement and trials and tribulations, and it's quite different to being an investor in a public listed business because you're really part of a small community of, of investors, um, and you get to enjoy that kind of early stage mm -hmm. um, experience as companies kind of grow and find their market and find success. Um, so one of the companies that I've invested in is a, another Perth company called Formalytics that does um, augmented reality to kind of help with um, uh, in, 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 in football, soccer, 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 soccer one. Yeah. yeah, that's right, that's right. And we call it soccer. We call it soccer, <laughs> that's right. Well, the market that they're targeting is, is the UK, so it's called football. football. But, you, know, okay. you know, it's been really exciting as an investor because we're part of a WhatsApp group in the case of that company, and the company signed a significant business development deal very recently, and so yeah, as investors, yeah. you know, we all get to 
um, celebrate that. So, yeah, right. yeah. yeah right. And you were involved early in that, so yeah. yeah, so I was first round investor in that one as well. Okay. Yeah. All right. hmm. Very good. Um, I don't know if I know this story, but how did you come involved in Pillar Rides initially? I Look, I think it was an introduction from Derek. So Derek so. Gerard was one of my co-founders in Green Sense, and I think early on when you yeah. were looking for, That's right. I guess, support, I think you were trying. I think you and Ray were looking at forming a board at that time. Yeah. yeah. And so Derek made an introduction. So Derek's kind of quite actively involved again in the startup community as an investor. Some um, people may know him. Yeah. yeah. He's around quite a bit. Yeah. So I think he's the entrepreneur in residence for Space Cubed or Plus Eight, the Plus Eight program, and also involved in the RAC's Better Labs program. So you know, he made an introduction, and I guess you know, the, I think there was kind of a, a bit of a previous experience we had with your last startup, so Green Sense and Days of Change were yeah, around right. at the same yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that actually. Yeah, and I guess I guess you're doing a wacker or something at the time. That's right. That's, that's right. right. Yeah, we're doing monitoring at yeah. the wacker and uh, oh, maybe it was the the, the old Sydney Stadium. But anyway, that's what I meant. Yes, Sorry. yes, yeah. Um, and, and I guess yeah, as I said, I, you know, sustainability is a personal interest of mine. And, and I guess for me, I think I was I like the fact there's lots of things I liked about the project, but I guess I liked that it was a consumer product and yeah. it was hardware, and I guess that wasn't that was new for me. So, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You know, I, I, in the Taylor Ride store. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. What else is? I mean, I mean, that's what I was going to ask you. Like, what is it? What is it about this as a business that attracted you to get involved at both levels, board and um, investment? Yeah, I guess when I'm thinking about investment in early stage businesses, I guess depending on how mature the business is, and different businesses at different stages of attraction and maturity, you're kind of looking for different things. And so early on, I guess when we first became engaged, I was looking at the founder, the team, the market opportunity. And they were all things that attracted me. I guess, you know, I think in particular, a couple of things I really liked about your project. So one was, I guess, you were all in. Mm. Um, so sometimes when you meet with, you know, early stage founders, you know, they're, it's, it's moonlighting or they're half committed or some experimenting. I guess in your case, you know, you've been all in for a little mm. while. Um, and I guess I also really liked the fact that you've managed to, like the project had generated a lot of passion. And so you had a wide community of supporters and people who contributed to helping with the design of the first prototype. Mm -hmm. And for me, that was a really good sign that it was kind of, I guess, a sign of traction building even in the really early days of the project. Yeah. It's good to look um, back at that, actually. That's the, lots of people before we actually even had a product or something, a prototype. Yeah. And yeah. I guess you came on around about that first prototype. I think the first prototype was kind of wrapping up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, those are things that I, I found you know, exciting. And I think, you know, again, I think the I guess, I guess the other thing you look at, particularly again as, as projects progress, is you're looking for the industry, like the market opportunity. Is it a big opportunity? Um, and some signs of traction in the product. And I guess that's something again that the, that you know Telerise has done quite successfully over the last kind of since the first right, you know round, you know the last year or so is um, you know actually had some traction through the pre-sales. Mm. And I guess as I've understood the you know mobility space more, you know it's clear to me that it's one of the biggest market opportunities out there right now. There's a huge amount of change in mobility we're kind of moving from motor vehicle to you know scooters electric bikes ride sharing autonomous vehicles there's a whole bunch of change happening in the mobility mm -hmm. space and i think e-bikes are a really big part of that and yeah. so i think you know, that, that's one of the things that makes it a really big opportunity mm -hmm. well that's i did find interesting that you've been following that mobility space and um, the more you watch the more you see sort of coming on yeah um I've been a bit surprised by the scooters that have been coming out, the electric scooters. Yeah. People coming back from Europe and saying they're everywhere. I mean, they see the e-bikes everywhere, but the scooters are now coming out mm -hmm. as the next sort of wave. Of e uh, one of the one of the things I found quite fascinating is there's a couple of kind of prominent commentators in this kind of micro mobility space, and they talk about this trend being kind of the unbundling of the motor vehicle. So it used to be that we did every journey in the car, whether it was kind of travelling down south for a holiday, short journeys to work. Um, you know, everything was done with the car. And I guess what we're seeing now is, you know, more and more options are coming in and they're taking over some of those journeys. So scooters take over those really short journeys, yeah. you know, you're, yeah. you're going the last mile, the last mile kind of yeah. stuff. Um, and then e-bikes are kind of the next, the next chunk. So e-bikes can go further, they can carry luggage, you can take a passenger like a child to school mm -hmm. or the shops. Um, and then you kind of get to perhaps a more, you know, a bit of more emergent space with those kind of very small vehicles, and then back to the cars. Um, and so, yeah, so I think I think it's if you think about cars as this huge multi-trillion-dollar industry, we're all kind of taking chunks out of it with these different mm -hmm. kinds of technologies. Mm -hmm. Exactly, mm -hmm. and that's there's more and more people I've been speaking to as we're going out and pitching, mm -hmm. or was walking about the bike, is that 
you know, Uber plus e-bike plus maybe a scooter if they live somewhere yeah. like you do, which is close yeah. to the last mile journey. Yeah. Uh, and they can get, at least at this point, get rid of the second car. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a change that a lot of people are starting to do. So. And I guess so just in terms of that kind of, you know, what you're looking for as an investor, I think one of the things you're looking for is a trend or a wave to ride. And I think, you know, mobility and e-bikes is part of, you know, a trend. It's a market that's growing, not a market that's mature. And I think yeah. that's something else that's attractive when you're, you know, investing at a, you know, at a, in, a, in a private business or an earlier stage that's business. Right. Yeah, okay. mm. um, you sort of mentioned this, but we do have a question here around, like, how important was... I guess myself and Ray as co-founders and the team of directors um, in terms of important decisions to be an investor in the business. Yeah, I think they were significant. I think I guess one of the things I think is is a little bit different about Tiller Rides again for a, a you know an earlier stage private business is that it has actually a very mature board and really good board governance. And I think I guess that's something that's Ray's brought to the company. Mm -hmm. um, and so that I mean. The other companies I've invested in do have boards, but not to the same level as, as Killer Ride. So I think that actually is something that, as an investor, gives you some confidence that, um, yeah, there is good, really good governance in place at a board level, both in terms of um, control of the company, decisions about you know the use of funds, but also I guess in terms of the strategy and and you know we've got a really good set of skills across the board. So mm -hmm. um, people like Nicole from a marketing perspective, yeah. and um, and so yeah, I think that's something that really. Um, you know, I think it's, it's a real positive for the, for the company. Yeah. Well, that's, and some people say to me, oh, look, you've got a lot of people on the board, mm. but um, my observation, I've only really been on two boards, but you've been on a few more probably, but there's a, it's very, it's very effective. And having that large group of people, we've got a lot of different people that come. Yeah, different, different skills, I think, which is, which is good. And, um, and I guess it's a relatively operationally active board, you know, in the sense that, um, I guess when you've kind of got challenges or questions, the board isn't just kind of responding to the direction that you're proposing, but actually offering you know advice mm -hmm. and input you know, based on the skills and the background of the people on the board. So again, I think that's another you know, asset. Which asset I found is good at this part of the last two years' yeah. journey. So. Yeah. And then I guess you know speaking about the team, like again, I think you've, you've assembled really quite a strong team. You know, we we're just talking about how organised um, Emily was from marketing. Yeah, yeah, we get all this running. This, this running. I arrived here three minutes ago and set this off <laughs> because I had all the instructions laid out. So, um, so it's a small example, but yeah, you've got a really good, really talented team. And I guess, I guess the other thing I just, you know, it's a, it's a small thing, but it's something you kind of emotionally respond to as an investor. So when I first visited Tillerise HQ, it's literally a garage startup. <laughs> um, so for people who haven't seen, or maybe it's in some of the other videos you've done, but. Yeah. You know, Tiller rides because there's some in terms of the prototyping, design, engineering. It needs some space and needs some equipment, and so there's this huge, I don't know, what is multi-car garage that's been converted to this startup studio. And um, you know, that's kind of one of the uh, mythical stories of a lot of startups starting up out of the garage. Yeah, and, yeah. and it's you kind of have to do it, you know. I have, <laughs> to have a good story. <laughs> that's right. And it's very fun coming down and seeing the team busy. And again, for someone like me who's got more of a kind of a management and digital background, actually seeing all the physical fabrication stuff going on, you know, the the forge and the press and the drills and yeah. the 3D printers and all that paraphernalia. Yeah, I yeah. find that quite interesting. None of your house is there. That's <laughs> not my house, no, I'm the least handy person in the world. Um, <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. There you go, I knew I learned something from this yeah. company. Um, well, we'll move to something practical. So yeah. we've, we've obviously prototyped and bought the Roadster to, well, it's not to market yet, but we've, we've been mm. pre-selling them now. And you've got customers riding them on the roads got now. customers testing them. Yeah. Um, what is it that stands out to you about the Roadster and what we've done in that, in, with, with its design? And Yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess the design appeals to me. I really like the design of the bike. I guess when I try and explain it, when I'm talking to friends or, or other potential investors about the project, I think something that people want to understand is, Know, how is it different or what's special about the bike? Um, and clearly there's a lot of um, you know innovation in the frame in particular, but and which you kind of see in terms of the visual design of the bike, it's got this very distinctive look, it's almost kind of branded by its frame, yeah, it's yeah. positive. But then in terms of features, I guess it's the fact for me that every, you know, everything's built in. You know, my experience with buying bikes is you buy the bike and you go back to the bike shop three or four times to add the stand and yeah. add the racks and add the lights and add the bike computer. 
Um, and then with e-bikes... You do the research in between. The research, <laughs> right, right. And with e-bikes, which are kind of new for a lot of people, you actually don't know what questions to ask, you don't know what accessories you need, you don't know if the battery's going to be big enough, you don't know if you need two batteries. Um, so the fact that frame, that frame and a lot of the thinking that's gone into what riders that we need means that everything's kind of built in, you buy the bike, it's got everything, you know, to be that transport solution, to be that replacement of the second car. I think that's really what's special for me about, yeah. about the Roadster. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's exactly all we would say. So it's good. <laughs> Other people think the same thing. Um, I mean, you may have covered this a bit, but what, what is it about investing in that clean transport sector that's going to, is a, is a good idea for right now, like this moment in time? Yeah, I, I guess for me, so I've got a bit of a personal passion for sustainability. And so I think when I invest, I want to invest in, you know, in clean technology. It's actually about making a better future. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Green Sense, we were in the building space, and I guess buildings and transport are actually really closely associated. So when we did work for property developers, um, you know, that was one of our sectors that we targeted, you know, we were looking at about, about how do we kind of help property developers get their, you know, their Green Star accreditation, help create sustainable communities. Um, and we were focused on resource use, but one of the things we were doing were these kind of big display screens in these fancy buildings that kind of tell told the occupants and visitors what was going on. And actually for a lot of the developers, the resource use in the building was only half of it. The other part was how people got to those buildings, yeah. how they how they, how they travelled there. Sustainable transport was a big thing, and so it's part of Green Star. It's, it's absolutely part of Green Star. Mm -hmm. So, like you know, public access to public transport, end of ride facilities, you know, yeah. charging, all that kind of stuff. And so that's where a bit of my interest in sustainability transport came from. And, and I guess also, like I, as you notice, I kind of live in a in a, kind of a in an urban area, and I don't like cars. Like I don't yeah, like the yeah. noise and the busyness of cars. And I guess when I've lived in other place, places in the world um, that perhaps are less car centric, it's a, just a much yeah, yeah. Yeah. more beautiful life that you have yeah, as you're yeah. walking around and living. And so I think, you know, a future where we don't have cars clogging up our streets, we don't devote all this land to parking and roads, um, I think is a future that I'd like to invest in. And I think the e bikes and, and the yeah, roads are yeah. kind of yeah, part yeah. of how we get there. Yeah. Um, That's interesting. I haven't heard that story. No, I, I had an experience. Um, I lived in Zurich once for yeah. about three or four months, right. and my girlfriend at the time owned a place right in downtown Zurich where yeah. it's basically only walk walkable, yeah. Yeah. and it was one of the most amazing yeah. sort of places to live I've ever lived in. Yeah. And um, yeah. it was basically that, a tram, walking. Mm. I don't think bikes were around like the share bikes yeah, then, yeah. but, it, you know, I yeah. had the same experience. Well, I mean, we, we live here, and um, it means I can walk to work, I can walk to the shops, my wife rides to, to work. Um, and, and that was the main reason when we moved back from Australia to, uh, from the UK to Australia. I mean, we were thinking that we wanted to live, we wanted to live in an area where we didn't have to have a car focused mm -hmm. in life. So you've got a car. We do have a car because yeah. we, we have a dog and we take the dog to the beach. So, yeah, um, yeah. you know, but I, I can imagine a future with no car. I yeah. think there are going to be options down the track. Well, I've seen you Uber quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Us, so, yeah. yeah that's just... So, you're yeah. right. Um, I mean, this is maybe a bit repetitive, but probably a similar question. It's yeah. like, so why do you think killer rides is an investment? We're in the we're in this sector, we're in the clean yeah. transport sector. Why are we a good investment in that sector? Well, I think I think look, it's, it's a big part of it is the product. So it, it actually is a distinctive product in this segment. And we know that when you look at e-bikes, and even if you narrow it down just to kind of urban transport e-bikes, there are different segments in there. You know, you've got the real value bikes, you've got the premium bikes, you've got everything in between. Um, and the Roadster is quite distinctive. You know, it has a kind of a unique place, I guess, in that when you actually look closely at the competitive landscape, it has this unique place in that it's 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 elegant, it's well designed, it's a good looking, attractive bike. It's actually well priced when you think about um, all the accessories and options that kind of come with it. Mm. Um, and, you know, it's kind of got that, but that premium bike Feel. Look and feel and mm -hmm. style. So, you know, I think the product is, is one reason. And, and I guess for me, you know, the other half is I just, I think I believe in the team. Like, I think, you know, sometimes you've actually, you can't predict the future. You've got to kind of think about what kind of team is actually going to succeed and win. And so I guess that's, mm -hmm. I mean, that's the other half. So I think it really is a great product. And, and I think, you know, you've created a team that actually can deliver, mm -hmm. you know, um, a winning formula. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's, we do, we're getting a bit of um, a few questions on getting down to detail yeah. on, on Facebook. And I think that's when I'm answering some of the questions, I'm like, well, if you just, if you could get to know some of the people involved and what mm. we've done, mm. 
but because there are people are just learning about the business for the first time on you know, yeah, the eastern sure. states. Sure. Um, so this is good to hear some yeah. um, If there's any questions out there, there's a few people watching, but I haven't seen a question come through yet. But um, if not, we can take all the questions. Um, for those people who watch this later on, you can just add questions in and we'll add them as they come through um, on, as posts. Mm -hmm. So feel free to do that. Can I, can I ask you a question? You can. So how's the, I know we're doing this equity crowdfunding, which I find fascinating. I think it's the yeah. first time I've been involved in a project that's done equity yeah. crowdfunding. We've got time. Yeah, I think we've, I think we've got 10 minutes. How's it going? Well, we are quite astounded by what, what's happened. I mean, we haven't done this before, the yeah. equity crowdfunding bit. Yeah. Um, in the first, we launched last Tuesday, mm -hmm. And that would make about nine days now. Yeah. And I think if everyone invested to the sort of the high end, we'd be close to eight hundred thousand dollars. Wow, that's right. The, yeah. Now probably would be slightly lower than that, but and that's just that's kind of this is the EOI phase. EOI phase, yeah. So people are just expressing their interest to to invest. And the reason why you do that now is so that you can get informed when the actual round opens. And the yeah. way it's shaping up. And we haven't got this on the website, but we're aiming to raise between one and a half and three. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, there'll be some big chunks coming through shortly. We've had a few phone calls for people, but there's, there is a chance, a chance in some way, that it'll close quite quickly. Mm -hmm. So um, expressing your interest now means you'll get informed and you can get in and actually make an investment. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, 165, 170 people, somewhere around that yeah, in the first okay. nine days. Yeah, I didn't really have expectations, but what I can say is from Virtual's perspective, they're saying it's quite amazing the speed at which it's growing, but the thing we're getting a lot of is the average investment until a rides or the expression mm. of interest is three or two times or three times a lot of the other ones they've seen. Yeah, right, so yeah. the number of investments investors for that value of, of mm. expression of interest is lower. Yeah, so right. it's like two and a half to five thousand, sort of in that average, yeah. rather than down around the thousand. I see. I see. So some of the projects hit them much, much lower levels. Yeah, that's yeah. Lower. lots of smaller investors, whereas we seem to be getting. Yeah, interesting. And I don't know what that means, but one of the interpretations could be that they see the value in that in the in the mm -hmm. investment mm -hmm. and are prepared to put a bit more in. So yeah, it's terrific. I actually think it's a really great innovation in Australia in terms of you know because it's only relatively new that we've had this. Yeah, well, I think it was November la November last year. You could do it the way we're doing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I think other countries have had it before, but yeah, four yeah. years in the UK. Yeah, yeah. 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 What do you like about it? I, look, I, look I, I just, I just find the whole thing fascinating. I mean, it's, it's. I think it's. Um, I guess it used to be that, like in terms of the companies that I've invested in, you kind of have to know people. Like you have to be on part of a scene and know yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. And I guess what this does is it opens it up to like a to wide everyone. to everyone. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's so true. it's not the same as I guess you know public listed businesses. But it's much more open and democratic than, I guess, traditional, you know, early Real stage investments. Yeah, that's right. true. That's um, true. I yeah. mean, most of our investors that we found in the past are a result of a network, yeah. and they're normally higher net worth type people mm. or people that have been in the startup, in the startup environment and kind of. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. So you're right, and that I think when we look through the list of people, we obviously don't know where they, um, who they are, lots mm. of them, but. They're all over Australia. The traffic is from Queensland, Sydney, Melbourne, Perth, obviously Perth. Yeah. But we actually thought we'd get more traffic from Perth because we're based here and we've been mm. um, building our brand here. But actually, yeah. I think it's spread across Australia. Yeah, it's so good. it's quite amazing. And I mean, for us, because we're all about building that community and eventually com community of riders, it's pretty exciting to yeah. see this many people get yeah. behind the project at this stage. So. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> We've got five minutes left. Um, I'll just do a little tie-up. Yeah. Um, there isn't a question there, so we'll answer those later when you when you drop them in there. Mm -hmm. um, I guess just as a sort of close off, um, have you got anything else? No, okay. You wanna you no. wanna ask me any more questions? <laughs> <laughs> um, if you've got any further questions, as I said, you can uh, put them onto the underneath this video. Or you can actually email us to ahoy, A-H-O-Y, at tillerides.com, and that's one of our, um, that's our main email address for these types of things. Um, if you've been inspired to inv in invest in Tiller Rides, um, then head over to the Equity Crowdfunding page. We, um, if you go to virtual.com, you can go to the Tiller Rides page, have a look there. There's an amazing video that we created. Um, I'm in the video. I even a bit of a show at the end of the video. <laughs> quite, a, quite, a, quite a few people. Quite a few people, yeah. It was, I mean, amazing effort 
to, to bring that together. And I think part of this traffic that we've got over the last nine days is because the, the video does, it, it lays out business, but it, it really sort of is quite inspiring to, to yeah, watch. Yeah. It so um, good way. tells the story. So check that out. That's a really good summary. It's around about five minutes, so it doesn't take long to check that out. And um, and also, as, as we always have to say in this, there is a general risk, risk warning with crowdfunding or any type of investing. So, you know, have a look around and make sure you do your work and your homework. Um, so that's that's about it for us. Right. I really appreciate you welcoming into your home no, with your right. wonderful painting in the back here and sharing your story and a bit of a bit of background because I've learned a bit more today. Um, so thank you. No, you're welcome. It's, it's been fun. It's and, been fun. Uh, I look forward to seeing if there's any um, feedback later from, yeah. from the viewers. Well, and if you want to ask Fabian specifically, we can pass a question on to him. Yeah, no worries. Um, the next Facebook Live session will be on Thursday, the 19th of September, um, and will be with Ray and myself. We'll actually be meeting investors in Melbourne. Um, so if anyone from Melbourne, we've got an investor night the night before that, on the 18th, uh, at the virtual offices, just go to our invest page on the website and you'll see uh, the details and you can register for that. Um, and we'll be talking about the sort of management and governance of Tiller Rides that we've put in place over the last, um, I guess, two and a half, three years. So. Um, save up your questions for them. Perfect. Right. So, Thanks, everyone. Thank you for tuning in, and um, we'll chat soon. Okay. Cheers. Bye. You're going to do the magical. This is where you need an assistant. <laughs>